Welcome back everyone, Stephen Vanderhoek here. Another video about personal finance, how we can make better decisions, improve our situation, and get ourselves towards financial freedom. We're gonna talk about two different ways that you can buy the same car. One is the way that most people do it, most people, poor, it's a bad decision, versus how the rich people do it, which is a very different scenario. If you're liking these videos and you're learning things, go ahead and hit that like button, give me that big thumbs up, or subscribe and come back for more later. So let's jump on into today's video. All right, we're gonna take a step back for a second. So growing up, my family, along with all my neighbors and pretty much everyone I knew, bought cars the way most Americans buy cars, which is by financing them. So you're going, you're, you want a car, you pick one out that you like, you maybe put a down payment on it, and then you finance the rest of it through a five-year loan. Well, nowadays, five-year loans don't really exist for cars, which is kind of crazy. They're usually six-year loans because you can get your payment lower by extending the term out for another 12 months. So people will do that pretty often. You'll even see seven years, occasionally even an eight-year loan if it's like a big Suburban or a big truck or something. Pretty crazy to finance out something out that long. But that's what was the norm in my neighborhood and really what's the norm in the entire world. But I remember getting to college and realizing, you know, I think there's a better way to do things. There's a better way than financing a car and paying interest for years to come. And so I decided I'm never gonna finance a car in my life. And I made that decision and I was pretty determined to stick to it. And so I needed a car. And so one summer, what did I do? I spent it roofing houses and I thought I was gonna earn more money, but at the end of the summer, I only had about a thousand bucks left for a car, you know, prepping for college and things, paying bills along the way. And so what did I do? I went and I bought a $1,000 car. I didn't go buy a three, four, five thousand dollar car or anything like that, or obviously not a ten, twenty thousand dollar car. I bought a simple one thousand dollar car. It was an old 1990 Accord, older than myself. I like to think that it was white, but really, eh, it was pretty rusty. So I called her Angel, my friend called her Custom Rust, but she got me through college, it was pretty great. It had red interior, automatic seat belts. If you've never been in a car with an automatic seat belt, you have yet to live. So yes, this car was certainly old. It had 250,000 miles on it. The AC did not work, of course. The radio didn't really work. It had an old CD player that would kind of work. The aux cord didn't work, but I could play CDs, but no air conditioning. I mean, in the summer, I also just wouldn't go places because it was so miserable to drive there. Or if I did, I would always fill my water bottle up, just fill it full of ice and water, hold that thing between my legs, lift it up, put it on my face, do whatever I need to do to cool down. Because no AC, let me tell you, it is not fun but it's all I could afford, so I made do. The car had to have a few repairs over the years, but overall, really reliable car, got me through college, and then I graduate, I get a pretty good job with a tech company, start making a real salary compared to, you know, 11 bucks an hour or whatever, and then what? Most people, when they graduate, they often get themselves a graduation present, they'll get themselves a nicer car, get ready for their first job, say, hey, I've got a salary now, I can get a nicer car, get something else. I didn't do that. I kept the same car, kept going, wanted to pay off some of my student debt, wanted to get some good savings up, start contributing to my 401k now that I could do that. Had my first, again, my first main job, so I was excited about that. So I didn't buy a new car. And I remember talking to some of my coworkers one day and they were laughing at my car. I was like, yeah, I know it's kind of like a junk, but I don't want to finance a car. And one of my coworkers looked at me and didn't understand what I meant. She was like, what, what do you mean you don't finance a car? And so, well, yeah, I'll just buy it with cash. And she looked at me like I had two heads. I don't think she even knew that was a possibility, realistically. I don't think she had any clue that you could actually just pay cash for a car and not have a car payment. And that kind of opened my eyes to say, hey, maybe this is kind of unique that I don't want to finance a car. And then another one of my buddies took me aside, and this was one-on-one, -on -one, and he truly looked at me with care and compassion, and I could tell by the tone of his voice and his mannerisms and his body language that he really thought he was doing me a favor when he said, hey man, don't you think you deserve something nicer? And he was, he, he sincerely thought he was looking out for me. And I just said, no, I don't think I deserve something nicer. Not yet, anyway. Yeah, eventually I wanna drive a nicer car and get something a little better, but right now I don't deserve anything. I can't afford it, I don't, or rather I don't want to pay for it, so I don't wanna put this cash towards a car, so no, I don't deserve anything. And that's an important mindset to recognize that you don't deserve a nice car. No one deserves it. If you can afford it, great, you can buy it. But if you can't afford it, you most certainly don't deserve it just because you might have a good job or you can make the most payments. Just because you qualify for a loan doesn't mean that you deserve this car. So that's something to keep in mind is recognizing, do I actually need a nice car? At the end of the day, okay, if you want a car that has heat and has AC, I get that. You want something a little nicer. I was driving a total beater. I drive something nicer now that does have AC and heat. Still not a nice car, bought it with cash, but 
at the end of the day, it, I get what you want to upgrade. I get when you want to say, hey, I just want some basics here. And you can do that, but just recognize you don't deserve it, right? It's a luxury. It's a privilege. As long as your car gets up and goes and gets you to work, that's really all you need at the end of the day. So let's jump on into the scenario. Now, I do want to clarify something. When I say poor and rich, I'm not talking about how much money the people make. I'm talking about their mindset, their financial decisions. In both scenarios, both of these people could easily have the exact same job, right? It's person A, person B, same job, same house, same family, same expenses. The difference, the only difference here is their cars. So keep that in mind is that this poor is not how much they make. It's not someone who makes 20K versus a doctor who makes 250, 300K. That's not what we're talking about. We're just talking about the way people make financial decisions, even though they're in the exact same scenario as far as what their house is concerned and their salary is concerned. So keep that in mind for today's video. These are really the same person. It's just whether you have a poor mindset or a rich mindset. In today's example, we're gonna go over what it looks like to buy a $25,000 car. Now, I don't think you need to buy a $25,000 car. A lot of people say, 25K, that's nothing. I want a $30,000 truck. I want a $40,000 suburban, whatever. I get it, you can get stuff a lot more expensive. We're just gonna assume 25K, Tr try to be a happy medium. More than I would like to spend on a car, less than a lot of people like to spend, and I figured it worked out for our numbers. So in the first scenario, the way someone with a poor mindset, again, both these people make $50,000. We're not talking about how much money they make. We're just, we're just gonna assume that both have the same job. In that poor mindset, they're gonna finance the whole thing. They do zero down, we're just gonna finance a $25,000 car. They're gonna do it over 72 months, which is a six year rate, a six year term. Pretty common. Yes, we see seven and eight years, which would make this scenario even more drastic. But for today's example, we're just gonna use six years because that is what's most common. So it's gonna be 72 months, and they're gonna have three and a half percent as their rate. A pretty good rate, nothing crazy, nothing special, but again, they're financing the whole thing, so maybe it's a little bit higher. So three and a half percent. Okay, so if they have three and a half percent in 72 months, again, six years, the way that works out is their payment is gonna be $385 a month. Now that's not including insurance or gas or anything like that, right? We're just talking about the actual monthly payment to just afford the car. We're not talking about the total cost of driving, we're just talking about the cost of the vehicle itself. No maintenance, no oil changes, whatever. We'll leave that for another scenario. Over the life of this loan, right, we bought a $25,000 car. Obviously, you drive it off a lot. It immediately plummets in value, whatever. We're not talking about the decision whether or not to buy the car. Both scenarios, we've already made the decision to buy the car. Now we're just saying, what do we want to do? How do we want to actually buy it? So in this case, they make the monthly payment. They never have a late payment. They never have any late fees, anything like that and they end up paying over the life of the loan, 27,773, so almost 28K. So it costs them almost $3,000 in interest that they're gonna pay over the next six years, but they get to drive their car right off the lot, right away, as soon as they want the car. Now, in this other scenario, what you could do is keep driving your beater car, keep driving your little 1990 custom rust, and save up for your next car. So in this case, we're gonna assume that this person saves for, again, 72 months, we're gonna have the same term here, and we're gonna assume an 8% return compounding annually. We're not gonna say it compounds monthly or anything like that, we're just gonna assume an 8% 8 8 return. A decent return, I'd be happy with 8%, but nothing crazy, we're not gonna say 10, 12%, right? I could exaggerate the numbers and say, oh yeah, this person made 15% every year for six years. That's unrealistic, so we're just gonna assume a nice conservative, but solid and respectable 8% return. So as you can see, in both scenarios, we're still talking about the same monthly cash flow. We're still talking about taking $385 out of our paycheck, and we're doing so for six years straight. So it's the exact same scenario. The only difference so far is one, where that money is going. Is it going to a lender? Is it going to yourself and you paying yourself and investing? No. And also the rate, of course. So we're going to assume an 8% return. But either way, you're paying $385. That's $385 you have less to spend on vacations, less to spend on rent, less to spend on food. But it's just a matter as to where that money is going. So in this exact same scenario where you're paying $385 out of your pocket every single month for your six, six straight years, and you're getting a nice 8% annual return, you're gonna get $33,892. So at the end of six years, you either did one of two things. You either paid $3,000 in interest, or you made, what is that? Almost $9,000, right? So we have a difference here where you're paying an extra $2,000 seven hundred and fifty three dollars right negative it costs you that or you're walking away with eight thousand eight hundred ninety two is that math right yeah that math is right so the difference there 
is $11,000, almost $12,000. The difference here is almost $12,000, $11,645, rounds up $12,000. So that's the difference. Again, this is the difference between being poor versus rich. Both scenarios, you're making the exact same amount of money. Both scenarios, you're taking $385 out of your paycheck every single month and putting it away, putting, either giving it to a lender or putting it in an investment portfolio. And the difference is $12,000 over six years. That's the difference between having a poor mindset and financing your car versus a rich mindset. And you can imagine if I would have chosen a $40,000 car and then we did it over seven years instead of over six, it's gonna be insane. Those numbers are honestly realistic. A lot of people do buy a $40,000 car and finance it for six years or seven years. That's not, a, that's not crazy to talk about. Both people, right, person A, person B, same salary, they both get a $25,000 car. The difference is when they bought it. Did they buy it on someone else's money, on someone else's time, or on their own time with their own money? And the difference is $12,000. So I hope that's a no-brainer. I hope this is an eye-opener to you. I hope this is informative for you. $12,000, that's nothing to blink at. Now this is, again, a pretty conservative, realistic scenario. I could have been all dramatic and made it bigger, but I didn't want to. I wanted this to be something relatable. Now if you have a car payment, if you're watching this video and thinking, well, cool, now he just called me poor. He said I had a poor mindset, awesome. Let's, let's slow down for a second, all right? What you can do is keep your car for 12 years, right? And then you switched over to the scenario, just keep making that car payment. So if you're three years in, you got three years left on your loan, so we got whatever, 13, 14K still left on our, on our loan, just never change anything. Every single month, automatically pay $385 for the rest of your loan, finish it off. Now you could sell your car and buy something cheaper to get out from under it right now. If you wanna do that, awesome, that's gonna be great. I'm not even gonna talk about that. I'm just saying, if you are in your scenario, you wanna keep your car and keep your payment, you're gonna keep making that $385. Three years from now, your car will be yours. Keep that car for another six years and keep doing that. Keep spending $385 and just invest. Put this into a nice, secure, diversified portfolio, right? Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't just go buy $385 of the same stock every single month, same company. Get yourself something diverse, whether it's an index fund or mutual fund, whatever you wanna do and try to get that 8% every year. And then nine years from now, you're gonna be in a scenario, and I know that sounds like a lifetime from now, but why not keep doing it? You're already making that payment. You're already making $385 every single month. Just keep doing that. You've proven you don't need that money. You're making the payment now, you're living without it now. So keep doing it once you pay off your car. Just change where that money goes. Instead of going to someone else, instead of going to the bank, instead of going to the dealership, pay that money to yourself, right? Say, hey, I'm worth this money. I'm gonna get myself an 8% return, and I'm gonna be $12,000 richer than if I were to repeat the same scenario again. I hope you learned something today. I hope you found this motivational. Let's do it. Let's make the change. Let's actually change the way we live. Let's get out from always paying other people, always living on other people's money, always living on other people's time. Live on your own time. Live on your own money. Stop paying the bank. Start paying yourself. Recognize, hey, I'm worth this. I'm going to pay myself every single month for the next six years. I'm going to buy myself a sick car and still have $9,000 afterwards. That's still my own, still growing, still increasing my wealth in my portfolio. We'll see you next time.